Hello everyone, back again to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So today's second video, which should take us to around the 9th of February, we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles over until around a couple of weeks. So I'm going to set this V2 for February at the end of the video, starting off with what's going on in the stratosphere, bringing you up to date with all of the latest developments in terms of the stratospheric temperatures over the Arctic and the North Pole. Um, JMA Friday has been released. That's the month ahead look ahead. It's taking us pretty much to the end of February. It looks like this wintry name only goes on uh, really uh, with the JMA and the CFSB2. They're both forecasting very mild conditions to continue for the next uh, four weeks. Only question is how settled and unsettled it is uh, week by week. But there's certainly no sign of anything cold from the north or from the east with uh, that one. So have a look at JMA Friday, see what's going on there. We've got the first ENSO update for uh, 2020 coming up tonight. I'll be around 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, you'll see what's going on with El Nino, La Nina and all of that kind of thing this evening. Right, so we're going to begin though uh, with the stratosphere. So this is the current temperature at 10 HPA versus uh, the average of this time of year over the North Pole. This is from the JMA. The grey line is the trend line. So at this point of the year, the temperature should be lifting up at 10 HPA in the stratosphere until it reaches its peak in uh, the summer months. The black line shows how that compares. So uh, we start off at the beginning of September, a little bit colder than average either men, and that was set in the sign of things to come for this uh, winter because overall we have had a very cold temperature at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over North Pole. We did go a little bit warmer than average at the end of November, just around a week or so, and then a real crash took place with temperatures going down below minus 80 at 10 HPA over the North Pole. We have never really got back to average except just there, just for a day or two, um, around 10 days or so ago, we got back close to average, but then we dropped again. So where we are right now is just there. So we are still cold of an average even now. We're around sort of minus 65 probably when uh, we should actually be coming up towards minus 55 uh, now. We should be around there at the beginning of February. So temperatures remain cold of an average at 10 HPA. That's where the stratosphere is rooted. Um, that's where the polar vortex is rooted, of course, in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. That's like the roots of the uh, of the stratosphere, you know, like the engine that drives the uh, polar vortex as well. So um, this is telling us when temperatures are cold as this at uh, 10 HPA, but we will be driving a very strong polar vortex. So we've come a little bit lower down to 30 HPA. Again, very cold temperatures at 30 HPA throughout this uh, winter. This is closer to the troposphere. So again, around the end of November, we did go uh, warmer than average then, but not for long. By the middle of December, we was down significantly cold on average, down to around minus 8. And we're still under minus 80 even now. Look at that around minus 82 when we should be up here somewhere, somewhere around minus 68 perhaps. So at both 10 and 30 HPA, we remain much, much colder than average. This is where the polar vortex is rooted. And this is telling us that the polar vortex is going to remain strong and powerful as long as we have these very, very cold temperatures um, in the stratosphere over the North Pole driving the uh, stratospheric polar vortex. What we're looking for is a warming of the stratosphere, uh, really to change this pattern and to weaken or get rid of the uh, polar vortex. Now, we are having a sudden stratospheric warming. We have, are, are having a stratospheric warming. It's not a sudden stratospheric warming because it doesn't reach required temperature levels at this stage. But we are having a warming of the stratosphere over Russia and Siberia with these uh, yellow and green colours just here. These blue colours over the top of the Arctic and North Pole, those are the cold temperatures. Uh, at, uh, at 10 HPA uh, that we was just talking about. So let's see what happens on the latest GFS run. So again, this warming does intensify a little bit over Siberia um, over the weekend. This is Sunday, just short of what I would classify as a sudden stratospheric warming. But it is a very significant warming of the stratosphere that's taking place there over the weekend across, um, across Russia. So quite a significant warming takes place across Russia. It heads over 
over towards the Canadian side of the uh, Arctic and it actually intensifies a little bit further now on the 5th again over Siberia just there so that is pretty much I would have thought uh, at sudden stratospheric warning type tension I see just, just a shade of red beginning to appear only lasts for an hour or two but um, I think this is very very close to a genuine sudden stratospheric warning now over Siberia around the 5th of February. Um, and this does cause a displacement of the uh, polar vortex at its roots. See how these blue colours, from where they are just there um, today, where those blue colours are, to where they are uh, kind of like by the early to mid part of next week around here. That's a displacement of the polar vortex at its roots. So this warming of the stratosphere over Russia pushes in towards Canada and does actually displace the polar vortex at its roots over towards the Greenland and Atlantic and uh, European side of the Arctic. So that will have an effect to weaken, somewhat anyway, for a while, um, this, uh, this polar vortex, I would have thought. But he doesn't get rid of it, uh, and eventually, as we go into the extended range of this GFS range, see how these green colours have infiltrated into towards Greenland uh, as well, but it doesn't get rid of the polar vortex at its roots. What actually happens is that um, the uh, blue colours actually meander their way back in towards the Arctic once again in a more extended range. We do get this secondary warming of the stratosphere. So the first warming sort of fizzles out through the second week of February, and then this secondary warming taking place up towards the middle of the month. This is 13th of February. But this one not reaching either sun stratospheric warming temperature levels. And so we finish up pretty much where we start, actually. That's where you finish up on the 16th of February, still with those blue colours moving back in towards the Arctic and the North Pole. Around the edges, it does look uh, a little bit above average, but still at this stage, no sign of a killing blow for this uh, polar vortex of these cold temperatures at their roots in the stratosphere. Uh, now, this is the ECMWF, so that's the GFS, uh, of course. This is how the ECMWF is uh, looking. This is the um, temperature forecast for 10 HPA in the stratosphere for 96 hours, which is the 3rd of February. So, again, there's that significant warming of the stratosphere moving from uh, Siberia over towards Canada. Uh, and that's causing a displacement event to take place where these blue curls are pushed out of the top of the pile. The, top, the pile is actually um, highlighted here with that black cross just there. So these blue curls are being pushed out of the pile, displaced out of the pole over towards the Atlantic and Greenland and Europe by these uh, brighter orange type colours uh, as we get through to the beginning of next week. Then we move to uh, 240 hours away, which is the 9th of February, and we can see that um, the blue colours are still there, actually. So we've got these warmer temperatures over here towards the Canadian side of the Arctic. The blue colours are still there on our side of the Arctic and look like they're moving back towards the North Pole, although they aren't as intense as they are right now. So um, we probably do see the temperature coming up, uh, but again, not a killing blow for the polar vortex and the cold temperatures at their roots in the stratosphere. Going down to 30 HPA, that's how things are looking. So this is close to the troposphere, uh, mass of boundary of the axial weather takes place, of course. So uh, this again for the 3rd of February, for Monday, we've got this warming here um, on the Siberian side of the Arctic, hanging over towards uh, the Canadian side of the Arctic as well. Uh, where we've got this black cross, that's the North Pole itself. Cold temperatures continue with the polar vortex up to that point. And then we get to day 10 with the ECMWF via the University of Berlin. An overall, very little change. Uh, a modest warming over Canada, but still with these deep blue curves, still with these cold temperatures over the Arctic and the North Pole uh, itself. So quite a significant warming of the stratosphere is currently taking place and will intensify further over Siberia and head towards uh, Canada through the course of next week. That will cause a displacement at 10 HPA of the polar vortex at its roots. But then it looks like up towards day 10, the polar vortex sort of begins to come back and the temperatures get colder again. 
in the stratosphere. So quite a significant uh, stratospheric warming, um, but not uh, not a killing blow. This is another way of looking at the polar vortex. This is the zonal wings from weatheriscool.com. And uh, we had a very, very uh, um, intense uh, zonal wind earlier in the winter. We was up here back in the middle of January. These are the monthly periods, of course. So that's January there, that's February uh, there, and that's going to be March and April. So, uh, back in the middle of January, the uh, zonal wind, which is kind of depicting the strength of uh, how how strong the zonal flow is, uh, the zonal wind was at near record-breaking levels for the middle of January. It's come down. It's just there. We're just there with the zonal wind. Above average, but average is the black line, so the zonal wind should be weakening. Of course, they should be dropping out now as uh, the temperature at 10 HPA warms up. Um, so at the moment, the zonal wind is just there, and it's still stronger than average, but it's come down where it was in the middle of January. We're going to see a further deceleration of zonal winds in the next week or so to get to very close to average, actually, uh, around there. Then maybe the zonal wind uh, strengthens a little bit as we go into the second week of February. Uh, but not getting back to those record-breaking sort of levels. But at the moment, there's no sign of zonal wind really dropping out dramatically and uh, like getting a reversal of zonal winds. That would be to take um, take those uh, lines down to there and then we'd have a reversal of zonal winds. We normally get that after sudden stratospheric warming. You'll notice that uh, these other coloured lines, um, so we've got three pink and one blue. Now, as we get through to March, this um, member of the, this one of the CFSV2, of course, for CFS runs. Uh, that CFS member is sending the zonal winds into reverse in the middle of March. So that one is picking up on a sudden stratospheric warming, I would have thought, uh, probably at the end of February. This one is doing it later in March. So we've got two, uh, two out of four members of the CFS suite going for a reversal of zonal winds in March. The other two... Uh, which is the other pink and the blue line, may do it as we get through to April. So they're very late getting the zonal winds into uh, reverse, and that doesn't happen until we get into April. But there's no sign of a reversal of zonal winds in February, which around this time last week, we was actually seeing indications of a reversal of zonal winds in February. So definitely the CFS, as the GFS has done this, has backed off the idea of a genuine sudden stratospheric warming during February, knocking out the uh, knocking out the polar vortex and sending the zonal winds into reverse. It looks like we've got to wait even longer for that now. And of course, this winter is ticking along. There's always a time delay on getting a sudden stratospheric warming and sending the zonal winds into reverse. There's a time delay on that happening. Uh, until you get a tropospheric response. Sometimes it can happen quite quickly, within a couple of weeks. Other times, though, it'll take a month or two before you get the tropospheric response. So if we don't get uh, a, a stratospheric warming until, like, the beginning of March and a reversal of zonal winds until the beginning of March, we probably wouldn't have uh, seen much tropospheric response to that until, like, late March or into April. If it doesn't happen until April, then obviously we are well past uh, the winter then and we might be looking at northern blocking setting up late in the spring or even, uh, and that wouldn't be very good news, but even into the early part of the summer. We shall see how it all plays out, but at the moment the GFS and the long range CFS definitely backing away from a reversal of zona winds in uh, February. So uh, this is how the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles are looking uh, for next couple of weeks. We're looking at London uh, today. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. And we're very mild at the moment. Uh, going to get a bit cooler tomorrow. Remember, temperature picks up again on Sunday. A little bit of a cold snap through the early part of next week. Monday to Tuesday will be quite chilly. And then the middle to the second half next week, it goes mild or very mild once again. And it looks like we keep these upper air temperatures pretty mild then through the second week of February, running up to the middle of the month. Precipitation-wise, reasonably dry for the next couple of days. And then as we go into um, the sort of second half of the weekend, so from like Saturday night into Sunday, then early next week, rather unsettled. A few more days of drier weather through the middle part of next week, and then into the second week of February, we're back into that unsettled stuff once again. It all looks relatively mild and changeable, really. Temperature anomalies from the 31st of January to the 8th of February are above average. How often have we said this during this uh, winter? So, yes, above average temperature anomalies again from the 31st of January 
to the 8th of February. Precipitation anomalies, overall drier than average, which probably isn't a surprise given this ensemble. Yes, there is a bit of rain coming through Saturday night into Sunday, but it's going to be dry up till then, and then it's dry for quite a few days afterwards. So the unsettled conditions really take over through the second week of, uh, of February. So overall, a dry and average week away from the northwest of Scotland anyway from the 31st January. To the 8th of February. This is how the GFS is looking for Monday. So Monday will be rather unsettled. A band of rain coming across the country. And then introducing some colder air from the northwest. A little bit of a cold snap for Tuesday. Wings in from the northwest. But it's not that northerly toppler we were talking about earlier in the week. Then the high pressure ridges in from the southwest. We turn drier. But probably with night frost from the middle part of the week. Before the high pressure slips into central Europe by Thursday. We start to draw back milder southwesterly winds again. Heading to, in towards the end of next week and then into the following weekend which is the 8th and the which is the 8th of the 9th of February unsettled low pressure powering in from off the Atlantic in fact polar vortex becoming very strong here again around Greenland and Iceland really powering up so this is giving severe gales here uh, on Sunday the 9th of February that's a severe gale proper battering of heavy rain sweeping in. As that pushes through, we do pull in some quite cold air from the northwest. So we call this cold zonality. The zonal flow, of course, is when winds are going and the jet stream is going from west to east. And that's typical for the northern hemisphere, the way we ro rotate around the sun means in the northern hemisphere, mostly the weather goes from west to east, which is the zonal flow. And at this time of year, that will typically be mild. But you can get cold zonality where the air is sort of originating from Canada, uh, from like uh, eastern Canada and uh, Greenland and coming across the Atlantic. It will be modified by the Atlantic as a long sea trek, of course, and the Atlantic Ocean will always modify cold zonality. But nevertheless, these sort of patterns can bring quite a bit of snow to the Scottish uh, mountains. So if you're off for a bit of skiing to the Scottish mountains in uh, the middle of February, if you're off up to the Highlands, you may do quite well, actually, from that if uh, if the air is cold enough coming out of Canada and Greenland and coming through the uh, North Atlantic. Uh, so just beyond day 10, we keep this unsettled weather going. Low press continues to power in from off the Atlantic, heading up towards mid-month. That was very stormy there around 14th February. That will be a Valentine's Day storm. Um, but it's a long way off, 348 hours, so hopefully that will modify. And we finish up looking like that, sunny 16th of February. Again, low pressure still coming in off the Atlantic, bringing more bouts of rain. Looks like heights are trying to rise a little bit to our norm, but I mean, this is 384 hours away, so... I think all we say is that um, in the second week of February up to the middle part of the month, it looks very unsettled, potentially even rather stormy with uh, the with, uh, um, uh, with zonality powering up again. Uh, this is how the GEM is looking, so uh, rather showery on Monday, then we're into that little cold snap for Tuesday, may bring some snow showers up to northern Scotland, high pressure which is in for Wednesday, probably night frost but mainly dry by day, second half next week we start to pull in these mild west south westerly winds again, as high pressure slips away to the south, and then moving up towards day 10, increasingly unsettled again, notice these purple colours coming back towards Greenland and Iceland, that's the polar vortex intensifying, and when those purple colours turn, turn up to the north as it's normally a case of lookout because we're going to go quite stormy so yes suggestion of potentially some quite stormy weather into the second week of february and maybe some cold zonality for the north anyway ecm looks like that so rather showery on monday then we get a little cold snap with northwesterly winds on tuesday high pressure back in from the atlantic for wednesday setting things down Probably night frost early and late on Wednesday. Second half next week, we begin, we begin to pull those very mild west southwest winds back in again. And then up to day 10, the ridge collapses as the polar vortex intensifies. And that's how we look at day 10 with the ECM. Quite stormy again. Those deep purple and pink colours are in there over Greenland and Iceland. Uh, polar vortex is powering up and intensifying. Band of heavy rain on an active cold front, I would think, is pushing across the country. And then maybe opening the door to some cold zonality from the northwest with winds coming in from uh, from Greenland and eastern parts of Canada. That's how the upper air temperatures look at uh, day 10. So still relatively mild, actually. 
actually at midnight on maybe the 10th of February. But you see how these blue colours are sitting there over eastern Canada and over Greenland. That's the polar vortex, of course, the cold temperatures that are powering the polar vortex. Um, and that's heading into the UK and western parts of Europe on those northwest winds. Will be modified, of course, by the Atlantic. But nevertheless, that does look quite a cold zone flow. Notice how... Um, how the gradients are very intense just here though so from quite a short range we have the 10 celsius ice firm just there to the minus 10 celsius ice firm uh, just there minus 20 celsius ice firm is actually just there so that's been a relatively short um short distance those uh, it's quite an extreme um upper air temperature uh, contrast so that will continue to f fuel further areas of low pressure we can see an area of low pressure being developed by that temperature contrast along the jet stream and so we're just likely to keep very unsettled conditions maybe even stormy conditions going uh through to the middle part of february i think this is a precipitation forecast based on that ecm run so again we've got showery rain in the west uh, today that band of rain pushing across the country but getting lighter as it does so into tomorrow some rain flirting with the south uh wintry showers up in the north there we go we go wet and windy through to Sunday, uh, particularly for England and Wales. So that could turn to snow across the high ground of northern England, southern Scotland during the course of Sunday as it hits some slightly cold rain. More rain into the south for early Monday. And then we go into this colder northwesterly outbreak through to Tuesday. That's our little cold snap. Doesn't last long. High pressure then comes back in and settle things down. And then as run up towards the end of next week and into the second week of February, the Atlantic returns. Wet and windy weather sweeps back in from the west as we move up towards day 10, increasingly unsettled with bands of rain and becoming colder up to the north as well as we pull in those cold northwest winds and the cold zonality takes over. Showers turn increasingly to snow across Scotland. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 10th of February. 22 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure really dominate. This includes the control and the operational ECM run as well, of course. That's what I was just talking about. Jet stream shifting south, so we do go on to the cold side of the jet, and that allows those cold northwest winds to come in by day 10. Another 11 with low pressure very close to the country again, powering in those uh, westerly winds. Another 10 just to here, looking um, quite cold and zonal with winds in from the west. And then eight, just a bit strong with the high pressure to our south. Has a high pressure sort of over France, low pressure a bit further north was still quite unsettled, but a little bit milder with that one. Slightly more of a southwesterly component to the wind. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This is for the 15th of February. High pressure to the south and low pressure to the north, bringing in the wind from the west. That looks unsettled. 14, that's 25 doing that. 14 with low pressure up to the north and the west. Again, bringing in those west winds. That looks unsettled. And 12 with high pressure over France. Low pressure out to the northwest. They look unsettled. All rows lead to westerly winds up to the middle part of uh, February. And then finally for this video, the CFSV2 uh, for February. So this is the 700 millibar high tonic from the CFSV2 for February. It looks as it has done as we've been looking at this through the month on and off. So again, high pressure uh, is forecast to be to our south. Low pressure is forecast to be to the north. We're forecast to be bringing in westerly winds for February. It looks unsettled, Atlantic driven, probably mild uh, with above average temperature anomalies, but also looking wetter than average, quite substantially so, a mild and wet February to end what has been a very mild winter, of course. Right, so that's it for video number two. It's all still uh, very much as you were. So um, we thought we might get a, a significant sudden stress rate warning uh, before the middle of February. That's been pushed back. And now we may be looking at March for that to take place if it happens at all. Um, so uh, uh, and that can continue to allow the polar vortex to rule the roost. And in fact, it's also like going to see a powering up of the polar vortex uh, as we go through to the second week of February. We may bring in some cold zonal weather with that, which might deliver some snow to Scotland. But otherwise, it's westerly, it's Atlantic driven, wet and windy taking over increasingly as we move into second week of February and up to the middle of the month. Into the second half of February, of course, that is much more speculative. We'll wait to see uh, what happens there. 
Right, that's it for video number two. Don't forget to check out Jeremy Frey. Tonight we're going to have the first ENSO update of uh, of the year. So we'll bring you up to date with everything that's going on in the Pacific Ocean in terms of El Nino, La Nina, um, and all of that sort of thing. Over weekend, going to be a lot of updates coming up. Got the week ahead forecast uh, tomorrow, of course, and a week's 10 day video update will be with you tomorrow as well. I think Terry Scully's uh, February forecast will be released tomorrow. Sunday, we're going to have Solar Sunday. Gals Web is Sunday Roundup and also Ensembles Watch. So it can be loads of updates to uh, keep uh, keep an eye on. So keep checking back to all of them. The next one up will be tonight around 7 o'clock. That will be January's ENSO update. So come back for that. Uh, then that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.